The core components of the electrical system are the two alternators. Each alternator has two important ratings associated with it, its voltage and amperage. Voltage is a measure of how hard the alternator can push electricity, while amperage is a measure of how much current the alternator can output continuously. Alt 1 pushes at 28 volts with a maximum output of 60 amps, while Alt 2 pushes at 28.75 volts with a maximum output of 20 amps. Note that some aircraft have an Alt 1 with increased capacity of 100 amp output, particularly aircraft with air conditioning installed. The output of each of the alternators is connected to a bus called the main bus and the essential bus. A bus is simply a way of distributing electrical power to components that require electricity rather than connecting each component directly to an alternator. The buses themselves are connected through a diode. A diode serves as an electrical one-way valve allowing electricity to flow in only one direction. In this case, electricity is able to flow from the main bus to the essential bus, but not vice versa. What this means is that Alt-1 is capable of powering both the main bus and the essential bus, while Alt-2 is prevented by the diode from ever powering the main bus. The final components of the electrical system are two batteries, BAT-1 and BAT-2. These batteries provide electrical power before the engine is started and provide emergency power in flight in the event one or both alternators were to fail. The important ratings for the batteries are voltage and their amp hour rating. The amp hour rating of a battery indicates how much capacity it has. BAT1 is rated at 10 amp hours, indicating that it could produce 10 amps for one hour or one amp for 10 hours. In practice, a battery is more likely to reach its rated amp hour capacity at lower amperage for a longer period of time than at high amperage for a short period of time due to the fact that at high amperage internal heat losses will cause the battery to not meet rated capacity. BAT1 is connected to the main bus where it is normally charged by ALT1 during flight. BAT2 is connected to the essential bus where it is normally charged by ALT2 during flight. So in normal system operations, we have ALT-1 powering the main bus and all associated items, while ALT-2 powers the essential bus and all associated items. While ALT-1 is capable of powering the essential bus, the higher voltage of ALT-2 pushes back against any attempt from ALT-1 to do so. Looking at what items are powered by each bus, we see that the two rows of circuit breakers farthest forward are powered by the main bus, while the row of circuit breakers farthest aft, closest to the pilot, is powered by the essential bus. Here is an expanded view of each segment of the circuit breaker panel connected to its appropriate bus. Looking at system indications, later aircraft display main bus voltage, essential bus voltage, ALT-1 and ALT-2 output, and battery charge or discharge rate on the MFD engine page. Earlier aircraft only display the first two parameters on the engine page. Earlier aircraft also had an analog volt and amp gauge on the right side of the instrument panel with a three position selector switch above with positions for ALT-1, BAT, and ALT-2. It's very important to understand that this switch affects only the right half of the gauge, which is the ammeter. Regardless of switch position, the left half of the gauge always displays the same information, which is the voltage measured at the essential bus. Again, it is important to emphasize it does not display the voltage of ALT-1, the battery, or ALT-2 based on the switch. With the switch in the ALT-1 position, the right half of the gauge displays the output of ALT-1. A negative alternator output is impossible, so any negative display indicates a gauge or sensing problem. Were the alternator to fail, the display should read zero. With a switch in the ALT2 position, the gauge will display alternator 2 output, and with the switch in the BAT position, the gauge will display charge flowing to or discharge from BAT1 and BAT1 only. So indication during normal operations would be main bus and essential bus voltage, the same as the voltage of their corresponding alternator. ALT1 producing anywhere from 10 to 25 amps, depending on electrical load, while ALT-2 has a much smaller load as there are fewer items being powered by it. As all systems are operating normally, the enunciator panel will be dark. If ALT-1 fails, all of the main bus items are now being powered by BAT-1, as the diode prevents ALT-2 from feeding the main bus. 
main bus voltage will drop to 24 volts, as that is the voltage of BAT1. ALT1 output will drop to zero, and the battery will show a discharge of what the load on ALT1 was previously. ALT1's output dropping to zero will trigger the ALT1 caution coming on steady on the enunciator panel. A flashing ALT1 caution indicates that ALT1 is putting out more current than it is rated for. As BAT1 is now powering most of the items in the aircraft as well as most of the high draw items in the aircraft, it is important that we load shed or reduce the drain on BAT1 as soon as possible. The four highest draw items on the main bus are the pitot heat, strobe lights, nav lights, and landing light. Conveniently, these items are grouped together as switches on the bolster panel. Taken together, these items draw approximately 16 amps, or almost half of the maximum potential draw on BAT1. Simply by flipping these four switches, we're able to triple or even quadruple the amount of time that BAT1 can continue to power the main bus items. If BAT1 is depleted after an ALT1 failure, the main bus voltage will drop to zero, and the battery will neither show charge or discharge. At this point, many important items are unpowered, including the MFD, audio panel, engine instruments, manual pitch and roll trim, all ice protection including TKS pump and pitot heat, flaps, and the landing light. This is why load shedding is so important to preserve battery power for landing. ALT-2 will continue to indefinitely power the most critical items on the airplane including the attitude indicator, HSI or PFD if installed, autopilot, and number one GPS and communication radio. In contrast, an ALT-2 failure is much less critical. ALT-1 is capable of powering all items in the aircraft. Main bus voltage will remain unchanged, while essential bus voltage will drop to approximately 7 tenths of a volt less than that of the main bus due to the loss of voltage as current flows across the diode. ALT-1 output will increase slightly to compensate for the loss of ALT-2, while ALT-2 output will drop to zero. This will trigger the illumination of a steady ALT-2 caution. A flashing ALT-2 caution indicates that alternator 2 is producing more than rated amperage. In the event of a dual alternator failure, each bus will be powered by its respective battery. The voltage of each bus will drop to the voltage of its corresponding battery. As the essential bus voltage drops below 24.5 volts, a low volts warning will be enunciated. This is essentially a dual alternator failure warning for the only way that the essential bus voltage could be below 24.5 volts is for both ALT1 and ALT2 to fail. Additionally, both the ALT1 and ALT2 cautions will be enunciated.